you guys. Here's part two. So I want to make sure to give you another look at these crazy ones where you start by just simplifying your thoughts. These are two fractions being added together. Now, there's my two, there's my three. So I need to multiply this times this and this times this to get my common denominators. And so I'm just going to put that right here, one plus sine of theta. Okay. Now, if I do that, then I need to do the same thing to the top, one minus sine of theta. And then I need to do it to the top here, one plus sine theta. Now, this is a little easier than the last one because I just distribute a one and I get one plus sine of theta. And then notice I got one times this, one times this. So plus one minus sine of theta. Now I'm just gonna keep simplifying this because notice how the signs disappear. One plus one is two all over, check this out, uh, one plus sine theta times one minus sine theta. Now this is why this stuff gets so challenging. Am I done? Well, if I just took a second and I realized that there are some things up here that I might be able to substitute, I'm gonna go ahead and foil this out. But notice we got uh, one times one is one, the outside and the inside would cancel, and then we get minus sine squared theta. Well, that two comes along for the ride. What is this? Well, one minus sine squared theta is actually cosine squared. So I get cosine squared theta, and that's done. Challenging? Yes, especially if you've never seen it before. Let me pause it, and I got one or two more things to show you. All right, so here's the grand finale. And when you first look at these, they definitely look challenging. You got to take a magnifying glass and just kind of think backwards. Here's how I'm going to teach it. This is actually asking you, um, this right here is actually kind of talking about, hey, uh, every problem we've ever done where we've gone sine negative one and then we put something in here, our calculator is spitting out an angle. And don't get tripped up on that. What this is saying is, draw a triangle where sine equals 3 sevenths and identify what your theta is. So if sine is 3 sevenths, we know this is our hypotenuse. We know this is our opposite. And just start simple. Try to draw that situation. So there's that situation. So once we've drawn the drawing, we now know what theta is it's right there in a generic sense. So once we've got the drawing drawn, the problem is simply asking us find tangent of theta. That's a really weird way to ask you to find tangent of theta, but it's just a little different wrinkle in this math. So um, what is tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, we know the opposite is 3, so now we got to find this. And that's going to be our adjacent side. There's no special family here. It's not a 30, 60, 90. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's x squared equals 49 minus 9, which is x squared equals 40. Bada boom, bada bing. Uh, it's going to be do the right thing, but it's going to be positive because we're finding the length of a side. So it's the square root of 40. Now, I'm not sure how particular your pre-calc book is going to be, but a lot of times they'll just leave it there. Um, but we better be careful. That's the same thing as square root of 4, square root of 10, which is 2 square root of 10. So it's really 3 over 2 square root of 10. Get that square root out of there. So we get 3 square root of 10 all over. That's 10 times 2, which is 20. I got a hunch they just left it there, but if they didn't, then they got this. Last problem of this lesson. I know this lesson's long. So this problem is actually saying, find theta or draw theta where secant equals negative four. Well, using our noggins, 
That means cosine of r theta has to equal this thing's flip, which would be negative 1 over 4, because there's an invisible 1 there. Why did I bring the negative 1 up? Because my hypotenuse has to be positive. So I'm going to try to draw a drawing where my theta is here. Just bring it here. My adjacent side is negative 1. I better actually draw it like this so you can kind of see what it's talking about. So my adjacent side is negative 1. My hypotenuse is 4. And now that we've got our drawing, we know what theta is. Not, not a degree measure. We just know the picture. So now we can take this all out. That helped us draw a picture. Replace it with this. That equals this. And now it's saying find cotangent. Well, what I would do is say, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So our answer is going to be the adjacent side over the opposite side. What's that? Well, my adjacent side is negative 1. My opposite side is right here. So i got to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's 16. Um, this is 1 plus x squared equals 16. So x squared equals 15. Take the square root of both sides, and that's what this is, the square root of 15. And that's my opposite side, so that goes down here. Again, I don't know this book too well, but that might be the answer. If it's not, then they're saying, all right, let's go with our algebra rules. So it's either this or it's this. That ends the massive lesson of 831. So good luck on the homework. The problems are different.